Good morning, Professor Jermaine. Thanks for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Uh, we have a question from one of our studio audience. He would like to know what's the difference between data, information and knowledge. Oh yeah, this is a very trivial and, and typical question which is very often asked by managers, particularly in America. Uh, the thing about managers is that they are not intellectually very advanced. Uh, they, they, this is why they are working in factories and companies and not in universities. And uh, particularly in America, they are very influenced by the British and, you know, they are influenced by the very old-fashioned uh, uh, epistemology of logical positivism, which, you know, kind of went out of fashion in the 1920s, but there we are. Uh, in Europe, of course, we have a much more advanced epistemology uh, in logical positivism. The, the whole thing is that knowledge is, is an object. It is a thing which can be moved from one place to another place, from one person to another person. And this is why the fascination with information and data, which from the knowledge management point of view, actually, uh, completely irrelevant. Uh, information and data have nothing to do with knowledge management. We, in the European tradition, of course, we have a more advanced uh, epistemology, which is based on uh, process philosophy. Uh, and we see knowledge uh, essentially as an activity. So uh, if you look at it from a biological point of view, in fact, we in the Freie University of Munsterburg are doing some very exciting research on this matter at the moment. If you look at it from a biological point of view, knowledge is an activity of neurons in the brain. So when, when we look at uh, knowledge being activated in an expert's brain, for example, uh, when he ex applies his knowledge, uh, and it's usually a him, uh, when he applies his knowledge, there is a specific pattern of, of neuronal activity happening in the brain. And if you want to manage your knowledge, it is most important that you can uh, detect and model this, this activity in the brain and replicate it in other brains. So we have been working on a very interesting device, uh, which we believe will become the next generation of knowledge management technology. It's completely wireless and connects up uh, to, to laptops. It's very simple to use. And what it does is it, it, it models and records patterns of activity as they emerge in the brain, in, in the brain of the expert applying his knowledge. So are you saying that you can record and replay people's knowledge? Yeah, in principle, yeah. Uh, we do have a small problem, which is that in individual brains, in different brains, uh, that, that the same patterns of activity will emerge in different kinds of knowledge. So we cannot at the moment model the exact same pattern that emerges in an expert's brain and then stimulate it in another person's brain. It produces some very strange results. But we have a strategy for overcoming this. We are the world leader in, uh, in establishing uh, a standard for universal knowledge neuronal network standard, application standard. And what this means is um, essentially that we can re-engineer the structure of brains, human brains, so that they conform exactly to these patterns uh, and they will, uh, they will respond consistently to the device when we detect their, their patterns. Of course, it will take some time to re-engineer um, um, so many people's brains, but we are working with uh, a very large uh, German technology company uh, who have agreed that we will, uh, we will uh, uh, re-engineer and standardize all the brains of their employees, and uh, thereby we will have a very strong pilot uh, research project in transferring their knowledge. Thank you, Professor Germain. You're welcome.